This episode is devoted to the most worthless aspect of Final Fantasy VIII. That's the card battle side game you know, mini quest known as Triple Triad. <sighs> fucking game. I, mean, I don't even know where the obsession with including these uh, pointless card battle side quests in RPGs came from. But I, I think ever since this game, they've just been all over RPGs. I mean, think about it. You've got, uh, you know, Tetra Master in Final Fantasy IX, that stupid fucking Blitzball shit in Final Fantasy X, Sphere Break in X-2, that goddamn Pizzant game in Knights of the Old Republic. And I'm pretty sure there was something in Jade Empire, and how about a game of Lucky Hit? So here I am, 17 years or something later, trying to relate to you what the Final Fantasy VIII experience was, me, what was like for me as a kid, and I don't want to do the card battle anymore. So guess what? I'm not gonna do it! That's right! Oh, I'll put the card game to rest once and for all, but that doesn't mean I have to subject myself to the 40 hours of my life grinding out those motherfucking cards and reloading old saves over and over again every time I was not around. Fuck that. I'm actually going to take your advice for once. I'm not going to play the card game. I did it once. I did my time. Now, I've got YouTube. Now I can just steal footage posted by other sad bastards who are actually insane enough to have enjoyed this bullshit. You were introduced to Triple Triad from the very beginning of the game, a collectible card battle game that swept the entire planet to the point it's all anyone plays. It's like Magic the Gathering on that score, only every person alive, child, adult, or the elderly in every city on the planet has a deck of cards, and you can't actually buy any of the cards. You can either turn the monsters you encounter into cards, and this is such a metagame concept, I have no idea how it's supposed to actually work in any realistic fashion. Or, more likely, you have to wager your cards against other players and take them one at a time when they lose. Hey kids! Gambling is good for you! Gamble constantly! But not only that, the game is so widespread and popular that organizations that can only be described as cults have risen around it, with people engaging in strange rituals organizing secret underground gambling circles and calling themselves strange code names to protect their identities from others. Take, for example, the Card Club, a secret society in your academy that go by the names Jack, Club, Joker, Diamond, Spade, and Heart, all of whose identities are unknown and who require you to beat them in order to talk to the next person in the club, meaning you have to go through the process of scouring the entire garden and talking to every single character in the garden about six times, and that's only after you win at least 15 games in the garden. And they're all people you have to get through several times if you, want to get all, if you want to get all their good cards to get to the mysterious king of cards. Oh, but you don't find the king of cards. He finds you. But here's how the game works. Each city tends to play by different rules, and you have to keep all of these rules straight if you want to win. There's the same rule where cards are flipped if the numbers on each side match, the plus rule, where a card is placed such that the numbers on each bordering side add up to the number they all flip. And then there's the combo rule, where flipped cards keep flipping other cards if they satisfy the plus or the same rule. But so far these are just kind of annoying. The worst rules are the ones that affect which cards are traded when you win or lose a game. The starting rule is 1, where the winner just takes a card from the loser. The best one, at least if you win, is all, where you get all of the loser's cards. The absolute worst, the worst fucking rule is direct, where each player walks away with the cards that they flipped, meaning you could lose the match and win more cards, but you only win the cards that you flipped. You lose the cards that your opponent flipped, meaning you can bust your ass to get a really rare card, win the match, and still lose your fucking Laguna card because the stupid jackhole managed to flip it early in the fucking game. And I- did I mention the random rule can suck my pucker? Anyway, this would be bad enough if you knew what cities played what rules. But here's the real catch. The rules change over time. You see, I'm not even really sure how it works. But sometimes the rules from neighboring cities will carry over to other cities like herpes. And if you let a really shitty rule spread too far, like, say, random, it flares up all over the place and you have to go all over the planet to try and get it treated and change it to something more manageable. And you only really want to play the basic game and not fuck with the variant rules. So all the time, you not only have to worry about winning games and keeping track of what cards you need, who has them, and what you need to play them, you have to keep doing preventative maintenance to make sure you're playing the rules you want to use. Worse, 
even if you do this, the rules can degrade. So if you're like me, and you tried to set the rule for you take all the assholes card when you win, the rule will often degrade to the, le the, the, to the next lower one in the hierarchy, diff, which is the one where you lose cards you didn't mean to lose. And this happens all at once. So get the globetrotting asshole. Welcome to Final Fantasy VIII. And some of these assholes will want to change the rules on you, or ask if they can play by uh, some other city's rules. Like you're going to remember what city plays what, and you really don't want to do that. Just say no, kids. <sighs> well, that was long-winded. I'm already tired. I think I'll catch him shut-eye before trying to find the king of cards. Whoa! Hey, <laughs> what's this? Oh, my. Hey, what are you doing in my room, baby? Hey, you even showed up in your formal uniform. Are we going to play Naughty Student or Clap the Erasers tonight? Actually, get this, Quistus is the king of cards, which says a whole lot of weird things about her I barely want to think about. I mean, she's leading this cult of uber geeks? Sad, ah, man. Yeah, she snuck into my room at 3 in the morning to play cards. Yeah, well, I guess it's Quistus in my room, so who am I to complain, right? Oh, yeah, baby, you want to play some cards with me? Yeah, I got a new rule we can play with. Loser strips. Ooh, Noah, your deck is so big. <laughs> God, I'm lonely. But I just find it hilarious that everyone is perfectly willing to play cards with you anywhere, at any time. On a mission, in the middle of a time warp, in the middle of an attack by fucking Modok. Anyone fall back, they're coming at us from all sides! We need to regroup and form a barrier between us and the snakes! What card? Sure, I got a minute. And I really hope you brought your own music. Because if you're actually willing to invest the time necessary to finish these side quests, you'll soon realize the true horror of Triple Triad. That fucking mouth heart music looped over and over and over again every time you play, like water torture, slowly eroding its way through your skull. And, and maybe it's just me, but I can't stand a little default weep, weep, weep noise every time you move the cursor. God damn, it drives me nuts. Same reason I disable all those little clicks and bells and whistles on Windows. I mean, who needs the same little chime every time you click on a link or open up a folder? You may also notice in your travels a lady who calls herself the Queen of Cards. A wandering card player who travels between the major cities, bearing different ultra-rare cards depending on when you play her and where. Now, how in the hell are you supposed to figure her out without a strategy guide is beyond me, because sometimes to progress in her little sub-quests, and unlock rarer cards, you actually need to lose specific cards to her intentionally before she'll bring them out. And that doesn't even get to the real problem of playing the queen. You know what that is? The queen is a cheating whore! Seriously, I hate this fucking bitch! Kiss your cards goodbye, or be prepared to reload constantly, because the queen chooses her own rules. I mean, what bullshit is that? Lady, this isn't Nam. There are rules. Everyone has to play along with your own creepy little world here. Says who? Who says I can't just stab your fucking head in with my gunblade and take your goddamn cards? I I'd say this was meant to be taken as seriously as Yu-Gi-Oh, but at least with Yu-Gi-Oh there was some semblance of order. I mean, this is anarchy. You want to get nuts? Come on! Let's get nuts. It's okay, so what's your reward for all this, you might ask? Items. You get the rare cards, you refine them into items. They're good ones, but you don't need them. You don't even really want them. And no, you don't need to do this stuff. This side quest nonsense is all over console games nowadays, and a lot of people dig the hell out of it. I guess my point is that more isn't necessarily better. I appreciate the desire to add a lot of features and open up the game to new options, but at what cost? If they put more effort into making a better primary game, maybe I wouldn't feel the need to break up the monotony with pointless minigames. Bottom line, I hate these stupid, superfluous games with no depth, no purpose, bad music, and goals that only serve to insult my intelligence. Oh.